I'm Colin Singer, immigration lawyer and managing partner of Immigration.ca. Canada Immigration News Articles, July 2014. Canada's Best Places to Live 2014. Time to Think Small. The best place to live in Canada is small, really small. It is often assumed that residing in a modest-sized town implies giving up access to most services and amenities you need, but it may not be true everywhere. Satellite communities have evolved around major centers to deliver small-town flair with big city conveniences. Several of these communities are not just great places to live. They're, in fact, Canada's best-kept secrets. An example is St. Albert, Alberta, a community of just 64,000 on the edge of Edmonton. Very few Canadians have likely ever heard of it, but it tops Money Sense's annual Best Places to Live ranking. The Top 25 Best Places to Live About half of the top 20 cities on the list are west of Winnipeg. The area offers plenty of opportunities to land high-paying jobs and the city is fast expanding its transit system and growing its cultural scene. The westward tilt brings some downside in the east. For instance, in Aurelia, Ontario, growth is stagnant, as well as in Owen Sound, and the job outlook is dim. Many big cities took a step back this year, except for Quebec City and Laval in Quebec, and Vancouver. A dichotomy is emerging in La Belle Provence, Quebec, where little-known communities like Boucherville, Lévis, and Rimouski are jumping up the list while Montreal sinks toward the bottom. Several critics point out that we don't include intangible considerations, like the best scenery or hottest attractions into the methodology. This is true, and the surveyors don't take these things into account because such characteristics are not the point of the exercise. This isn't the best places to visit list, it's the best places to live list. The characteristics taken into account include good access to medical care, a low crime rate, good public transportation, and favorable weather conditions. And most importantly, the best places to live in Canada must be affordable. So, measures like housing prices, employment and wealth are particularly given the greatest weighting in the methodology calculation. St. Albert, Alberta beats out every other city in Canada. Unemployment is just above 4%. Incomes are among the highest in the country. The crime rates have been steadily falling. And while winters have been quite cold, about 28 days a year, with minimum temperatures below negative 20 Celsius, there is plenty of sunshine during the rest of the year. St. Albert also holds a special appeal for young families. St. Albert stands out as a place where cars don't always come first. Street hockey is commonly played on the streets, and you can easily close down a street for a neighborhood party. Before moving to St. Albert, Brandy Siffeldine, a 33-year-old tech company employee, and her husband, Quentin, 33, a car dealership manager, lived in downtown Edmonton. But since their 19-month-old daughter Brielle was born, their priorities completely changed, and they appreciate the new surroundings that St. Albert caters to children. The city has ample green space, an abundance of outdoor rinks, and more than 85 kilometer of biking trails along the Sturgeon River. It also runs an international children's festival that draws 55,000 people per year. If one is thinking mid-size appeal, a small city might not be for you, and you could check out some of the top-ranked cities with medium-sized populations ranging between 100 and 400,000. 
the top-ranked mid-sized city is Burlington, Ontario, which also earns fifth place in the overall ranking. Burlington offers the convenience of being close to a major center like Toronto, but also has the bonus of a higher quality of life. Denise Lee Hutchinson, 28, grew up in Toronto, but now feels more at home in Burlington. I thought I would miss Toronto bars and nightclubs, she says, but I don't. The streets are cleaner, it's not as busy, and it's generally friendlier. I have more neighbors that I speak to on a daily basis than I did when I lived in Toronto. However, Burlington is one of the more expensive cities in the ranking, where the average home now costs almost $500,000. But Burlington earns top marks for low unemployment, low crime, pleasant weather, high incomes, and great transit facilities. If you are thinking larger cities, except for Calgary and Ottawa, two-thirds of the major cities with populations over 400,000 have experienced drops to some degree. Brampton, Ontario, Surrey, BC, and Montreal have all seen steep declines. The main cause is high rates of unemployment hovering between 8% and 10%. Another cause for concern in the larger cities is the rapid increase in housing prices. In spite of rising mortgage costs, the average family incomes have remained the same or even fallen, implying that it takes that much longer to pay off a mortgage or to save for retirement. Montreal faces the problem the most. The city may not be as expensive, say, as Vancouver or Toronto, but the salaries are much lower compared to the other big urban centers in Canada. In Montreal, average family income is 62000 yet home prices are on par with Ottawa, where the average family earns $40,000 more per year. Calgary dropped from first to second place this year, mainly due to minor hiccups in the unemployment rate, home affordability, and an increase in population growth. Calgary, however, continues to evolve impressively. Architectural landmarks include the TELUS Spark Science Center and an upcoming National Music Center. The unemployment rate is below 6% and household incomes average above $100,000 per annum. Vancouver gained ground this year. Improvement in the unemployment rate and a drop in the crime rate helped increase its ranking to 39th overall from 52nd a year ago. Vancouver also tops in terms of culture, where more than 4% of the city's population are employed in the arts, culture, and recreation sectors. Thirty years ago, Christopher Gaze, 61, was looking for work as an actor when he moved to Vancouver. Today, he's the artistic director for Bard on the Beach, Western Canada's largest professional Shakespeare festival. Vancouver's ballet, opera, and Grammy award-winning symphony are all high on the list. Source, moneysense.ca